In this video, we are looking at how to enforce access control using Amazon Cognito. We will explore how Cognito user groups can help manage permissions and how you can implement role-based and policy-based authorization when building ASP.NET API applications. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is part of my Amazon Cognito series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring it. You can assign users in your Amazon Cognito user pool to groups. Groups are logical collections of users that can enable you to more easily manage user pool. You can use groups to create collections of users to manage their permissions or to represent different types of users. You can create separate groups for users that have readers, contributors, editors, admins, etc. Individual users can be in multiple groups. So let's head over to our Amazon Cognito and see how we can add user groups. So we already had a user pool created from the previous video. I highly recommend checking that out if you're completely new to Amazon Cognito. So we have this existing pool of users where we did register one user. Now I also went and registered another user for this specific video. So we have two users in my pool. Now, if you head down to groups, we can create a group inside here. So let's create a new group. Let's give this a name. So let's call this as admin. And let's say this is administrators for some application, or it can be administrators across your organizations. So let's specify administrator group and let's click create. Now, this is going to create a new group and this currently does not have any users. So let's go and add one of our users. Let's use my Gmail user and let's add that into here. Now, we have one user which is an admin and another user that is not an admin. Now, let's see how we can manage our ASP.NET application so that it can start using this group to give access to specific API endpoints. Now, with this user added to the admin group, let's see how the tokens are different and how this information is contained in the access token that we retrieve back. So, let's navigate back to our application client, which is set up to log into our application. And let's go to this My Web App and click Login Page. Now, this is going to ask for the username and password. So, let's log in with my admin user. And let's also specify the password. Now it did validate correctly and it redirected with the application code. So we were using this code to exchange for our token. So let's switch over to Postman and use this existing setup to switch the authorization code for a token. So let's use the newly received code and let's click send. Now this is going to return back the ID token and the access token. We covered all of this and how this Postman was set up in the previous video on user pools. So let's copy this access token from here and let's see what information this token has. Now let's use jwt.io to inspect this specific token. So I'm pasting that in here and you can see here there is the Cognito groups and admin is part of that. This is something that's got newly added since we added this user to this group. So we can start using this information from the token to give access to users on our API endpoint. Now let's switch over to Rider where we have an existing application that we used in a previous video to set up authentication and authorization using Cognito. In the program.cs, all we did was to add the required authorization for the endpoint and we also configured authentication and authorization in the pipeline. We also configured how to talk to Cognito and set it up in appsettings.json. Now all these configurations are there and I show in detail how all of this works in the previous video. So check that out which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. Now, well, let's go a step ahead and start using these groups from the token to restrict access to endpoints. Now we have the get endpoint, so let's say that's available for all users. So let's also go and create a new host endpoint. Now I can go and write this, but let's use AI to generate this endpoint for us. Now I will use GitHub Copilot, which already have set up in this IDE. And let's switch this from ask mode to agent mode. So this has access to this file and can generate that specific line. So let's paste in a prompt. So I have already copied it. So I'm just saying add in a new post endpoint to post a new weather forecast. Just add a log statement in the body because I don't want it to do any functionality. So this is going to update our code and add in this new endpoint. So we have the new endpoint, which is map post. This is also added the require authorization, which is great because that is something we want. And it is returning results dot okay after logging that specific input request. So we have a new endpoint. Let's see how we can protect this for just admin users. 
Now, one of the ways you can add authorization is using role-based authorization. In this case, you're just looking at the role and specifying any users in this specific role is going to have access to that endpoint. And that is exactly what we're going to do first. So this usually works. You would have seen by having authorization and specifying the roles parameter and specifying the name of the role that you expect it to be in. To use this in minimal API endpoint, all we need to do is attribute this specific endpoint with that attribute so let's specify authorize let's specify roles and in our case this is going to be admin because that is our admin name so if you switch over to jwt.io you can see that is the name that comes in so let's specify that now we also need to specify where in the token can our middleware look for this role attribute now since in our case this is part of the cognito colon groups we'll need to configure this inside our configuration. So let's copy that and let's switch back. Let's go to app settings.json where we are configuring this and we can configure an additional property under here. So let's specify the role claim type and specify that to be cognito groups. Now this is going to use the cognito groups property inside the claims to figure out what the role is. So once we have specified both of these, let's run this application to test this. Now we were using the .http file to generate the request. So let's still use that. Now we don't have a new endpoint for the post. So let's also use Codepilot to generate that for us. So all I told was to generate the post request in the HTTP file and here I have the full request that I expect. So let's accept this and let's start using this. So we have our application running. So let's go into the services and let's use the get call. So we can hit the get. This is going to return 401 unauthorized because I haven't specified any token here. So let's paste in the token that we copied earlier. So let's go to my clipboard and paste in the token. Now we have the token. So let's save this file again and make a get call again now in this case this is returning all the details and it's returning the data that from the get endpoint now we can also make a post endpoint call so let's make that call and here you can see the response body is empty and it is returning a 200 okay now if we were to look at the debug and go to the debug output we can see the log information being outputted in that console now let's switch back to the other user and make sure that the other user which is not an admin does not have access to this endpoint. So let's switch back. Let's go to the navigation again. So let's go to view login page. Let's sign as a different user. And in this case, I have my Hotmail account and let's click next and let's log in using the password. Now we get redirected again. So let's copy this code and exchange it for a token. So let's go to Postman, copy this code and exchange for a new token. Now we have the access token selected here. So let's copy that and let's inspect it in jwt.io. And here you can see that there is no group of the admin role inside this token. So let's use this now in our application. So let's switch back to our .http file. Let's replace this token with the new one that we just copied. And let's make a call to the get and post. So let's go into the services tab again. Let's make a get poll. So this should return as expected because we haven't enabled any restrictions on the roles in the get call. Now let's go to the post and make a call again. Now you can see here this returns 403 forbidden because this user does not have the group claims on it and because of which it is not an admin user. Now, ASP.NET also provides a more flexible way of managing authorization. This is called policy-based authorization. Now, underneath the covers, the role-based authorization or another form claim-based all uses the same mechanism of a policy under the hoods to get the functionality working. Now, I will be going into a more detailed video about the underlying mechanics of all these in a future video. But let's get introduced to the idea of policy-based authorization. So, in this case, we will be specifying specifying a policy and then using the policy to then validate our users. So this is usually seen by having the attribute authorize and the word policy on it. So you can see here authorize policy instead of roles and we will be specifying a policy name. Now this policy can be much more complicated than just checking one claim attribute. You can also have additional logic inside that. But in this video, we will just cover how to add a new policy and just check the existing role claims. So let's go back to our code, update this program.cs and let's use authorize policy instead of roles. So let's specify this as policy. Now we need to specify a name for this. We can leave it as admin 
or you can also say admin only because that is a new custom policy name. Now, in this case, we have to configure a policy when we are setting up our application middlewares. So let's go back to our builder.services.add authorization and further customize this. So let's add in an option. So let's call this as configure because we are going to further configure this and let's specify configure.add policy now in this case we are going to specify an admin only policy and you can see copilot has already given us the autocomplete here so let's press tab and we have the code that is required to enable the policy let's make sure that this semicolon is removed and it has the right code so in here all we are saying is this policy requires an authenticated user and it also requires a claim which is looking at the exactly same cognito groups to have an admin claim so with this policy added into our middleware, so we have this configured in our services, which means we can start using this inside here as well. So let's run this to see this in action. So our application is running. So let's switch over to our HTTP file. Let's make a GET request, which does not have any policy, which means it is going to return as expected. And let's make a POST call. Now the token that we have right now is for the user that is not an admin. So you can see this is returning a 403 forbidden. Now, if I switch back and paste in the new token, so let's update this to switch to the new token and let's make a request again on the post. Now, this time, since the token is for an admin user, it is responding with response code OK. And we can also see that the log statement is in the debug output and the summary is being written here. Now, for this specific case to work, we don't have to specify the role claim type because it is not using the role based authentication anymore and it's using the policy based. I hope this gives you a good understanding about role-based and policy-based authentication and how you can use this with Amazon Cognito to add access control to your ASP.NET API. In a future video, we will dive more into the policy-based authorization and see how it works internally and how to set up more complicated policies that you might require for your applications. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.